I've always been a little bit standoffish about VR. Being standoffish about VR. So why did you do VR? Well, because I figured that if it exists, there might as well be something nice. Um, hello. Hi. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm Tim Rogers from Kotaku.com. I'm Paloma Dawkins from uh, the world. I'm a cartoonist and an artist and I do animation and lately I've been doing a virtual reality game. So you've done, you've done several games. Yes. I can't remember how many now. Okay, my first game was called Dream Warrior. I did it with this like really psychedelic sound artist. She wanted me to do a game that started in red and then it went into uh, yellow and then orange and then, um, oh wait, no, orange and then yellow and then green and then blue and purple. The and spectrum, then back to the, red. The, the visible spectrum yeah. you're saying. Mm -hmm. And it loops and it's really psychedelic and it was my first game. My next game was called Gardenarium, a garden in the clouds. And um, you're, you're just like this stranger. It's, I wrote the story inspired by um, Kafka's castle. And so like your only goal is to like get to the top, but all the characters that you talk to, like they don't care about you at all. And they're all sort of like trying to like um, send you on like different missions. And so they kind of like, they're all like, oh, are you the, the, uh, the janitor or something? And they'll all kind of like try to like decide who you are, but you're just exploring. Because my secret um, theory about that book is that he's lying the entire time. Kay is just lying. You think Kay has no business at the castle? None at all. You know, I worked on a video game that was inspired by that book once. Really? For about four years of my life. No way. Nobody wants to hear about that though. No, um, which one? It was, it was a triple A video game. Oh. Uh, so it was, uh, it was made with EA money. Um. Uh, four years, not knowing what the game was called, not knowing who the main character was. I gotta say, the game that came out was not very Kafka-esque. However, <laughs> the experience of working on it was quite appropriate. It was, it, was, it was quite appropriate. Anyway, so would you say Gardenarium is like a garden planetarium? Yeah. <laughs> okay, my next game after that, uh, I did, it was called Alia. And uh, Alia, I made that with uh, Kale Bradbury, Netgrind, great artist. Yeah, we just wanted to do a really psychedelic nature trip game. It's inspired by uh, the Muir Woods in San Francisco and so uh, last time I went on a hike there I was with like a huge group of people and they were walking really fast and I was trying really hard not to trip over the branches and at the same time like see around me and I thought that that was like it felt like a game especially since it was like GDC I was just like in game mode oh yeah this 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 should be a game and so I just like hit up my friend uh, Kayla Thompson and uh, asked her to do the music, and so like it, it became like a rhythm hiking game. Rhythm hiking root avoision simulator. Is mm, it, yes. Avoision. I don't think that's a word, but it sounds better than evasion. When I tell people that I make videos about video games for a living, or that I, you know, I've made video games for a living before, um, they're always like, "Oh, that must be so fun." <laughs> you, you must have so much fun. So I see your your visual style and your games, and I accidentally, I committed the sin of saying, it looks like you have fun with the visuals in the game. So, uh, No, I did have fun. Yeah, did? I did have fun. I mean, there's a lot of, like, a lot of problems along the way, like, you know, things will just fall apart. That's not fun, but, I mean, the visuals are fun. Making the visuals is fun, getting them, like, in a computer and yeah, having exactly. them work is... Yeah, do what you want, and, like, consistently. I always would say the, the last 2% yeah. of the thing is 98% of the work. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, the, like, I made that game and I, like, worked really hard on the puzzles, on the, like, rhythm. And then, like, as soon as it was built, it, like, all the puzzles just, like, became something else. And I'm just like, why? Everything good, creatively, artistically, is, 
is bursting at the seams in, in some way or another. I made a game called Paw Mystery, and it's this really weird, I like, I was just like really pissed when like, the president got voted in, and I was just like, I was just feeling the vibe of everyone at the time, and I just wanted to like, make some art that was sort of like, riding that like wave because it was so intense like oh, yeah. the vibe was just like insane and so i just like made all this like really bizarre like weird hands like grabbing and like i just had all these assets so i just like threw them into a game <laughs> a unity scene yeah and then uh yeah i just like combined it with like other ideas i had and so it just became this like weird surreal thing so when you say palm mystery it's not you're not talking about palm trees no. You're talking about a palm. different type of palm. So this game is, uh, it's, it's, it's visually and audioly, I'm gonna say audioly. <laughs> it's videoly and audioly like shocking uh -huh. and confrontationally loud, I would say, both the visuals and the sound. Yeah, it's kind of like anxiety inducing. <laughs> If that was on accident, that's that's terrible. Uh, it's a terrible mistake. No, However, it was definitely on purpose. It was it was not on accident. Yeah, that that game is really scary. Mm. Really, really, really kind of incredible. So, now see, if that were VR, can you imagine? Uh, I would I would throw up all over myself if that were VR. Have you made a VR game? Yes. Oh, I believe I played it a couple of minutes ago, actually. <laughs> so. Wait, yes. was there anything between Paul Mystery and uh, Museum no, of Symmetry? No, uh, I made that game on a break because, <laughs> yeah, I was like waiting for the money to kick in for, for a museum and so it was just like... So, uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the money? Oh, well... Just, just a little tiny bit about the money. We don't... We don't I'm more interested in the art than the money. What's, what's the money? The money comes from the Canadian government. Pretty dope. Right? So the Canadian government yeah. paid money for, for, for you and, and your, your team mm. to make this game yeah. that we're seeing right now yes. because I'm cutting the footage over us talking. <laughs> they paid the money to make that. Uh -huh. Meanwhile, the US government pays money to make this. Some visual joke that yeah. I'm putting over <laughs> this while we're talking. Made with the National Film Board of Canada, mm -hmm. and they have like a long history. I mean, it started as propaganda or something. What was, what was Canadian propaganda? Like maple oh, syrup? Oh God, I don't know. Yeah, good. actually. I mean, it must have been like the New Frontier, or, like something like that. Yeah, I mean, now they just kind of like make things for people. And so we just wanted to make this like really like cute, sweet, fun thing that like anyone can enjoy. Because I mean, I've, I've always been um, a little bit standoffish about VR. Uh, oh yes. Yeah. It's uh, it's tricky. It's a tricky one. So I, I will say that um, the the readers of Kotaku.com mm -hmm. they seem to not not pointing any fingers. This they seem to not like VR. When there's a post on Kotaku.com about a VR game, mm -hmm. it doesn't really get any traffic, and then it gets some comments like, VR's dumb, I don't like yeah. VR. And I'll be honest, I, I think I know why. Yeah. Because it's it's a lot of, you know, you gotta basically designate a room in your house to do it, and I don't have any of that equipment. And oh, yeah. You get tangled up in wires when you're playing. Yeah, and the, it gets all sweaty. The, the better the game, the more tangled up in wires you get. True. Because the, the room scale stuff. So, so there's a reason for being standoffish about VR. So why did you do VR? Well, because I figured that if it exists, there might as well be something nice. Wow. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's so pure and nice. <laughs> so congratulations for thinking something pure and nice about something in the world. It's, uh, it's refreshing. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like building on the theme of my first game, the, um, the Dream Warrior one where you're kind of like going through the colors. So, I mean, this game kind of goes through the colors too, but in a different way. So you start um, in the like red area and it's kind of like the dark. And so you have to like light these like flames. And then you talk to these characters that are like, don't be afraid, it'll all be fine. And so then you get over the fear and then you go into the chaos. It, it also kind of follows uh, like Joseph Campbell's The Hero's Journey. 
I noticed yeah. that. Uh, yeah. I, I wasn't going to say it, uh, but I'm, I'm glad that you did. Yeah. So then, you okay, you, you fight the fear, you, you go for it, and then it's all crazy, and it's just like chaos and then you're in you're like you're you're being flown across the sky and you're, you don't even know what's going on what I know about VR and about VR game development is they always say to not make the game too long uh -huh. always make it somewhere around like 20 minutes because people will they'll go wacky if they spend too long in, yeah. in a VR world right mm -hmm. they'll they'll go stir crazy mm -hmm. okay so so your, your your game Museum of Symmetry is about it's about 20 minutes long mm -hmm. and uh, so developing something like that, you obviously have to spend a whole lot of time. Oh yeah. Right. Uh, so you're, you're you're in that VR world definitely more than twenty minutes a day. Yeah. Right. My neck, like, I, there's been a couple times where it's just like my neck will like stop working, and I'll like, cause I'm just like doing this all the time, like looking for like problems. A thing that every time I play VR, mm -hmm. I always try to do something really dumb, right? Cause I try to do dumb things in video games in general, cause I'm. I'm an idiot, like I don't know. And when I play a VR game, I always try to do something really dumb because it's like so, so viscerally, I'm in this thing. When I play Doom VR, um, I like, I turned the gun around and like put it in my face so I could like look down the barrel of the gun like yeah, a microscope. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, the game let me do that. It's, it's funny. Yeah. However, games don't often encourage me to do stuff like that. Yeah. So your game has a lot of these, it turns just these very mundane things into so much fun. So mm. the thing that I like, the thing that just, I could just do all day was watering those flowers. So you, you get a watering can and you're watering flowers and just like holding the watering can up and then, I actually played the game left-handed, but. Uh, <laughs> so like uh, like holding the watering can up and, and like dribbling the water down, just like watching it go and like holding it really high. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was really good. And then I loved the using the racket to hit things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like that was uh, that was like so crazy fun. Yeah, it's fun. It's all responsive. I and mean, then like that makes that satisfying tick sound. Yeah. Like, click. Very good sound in the game in general. Yeah, Beatrix. Oh, she's amazing. Oh, Beatrix. Uh, she does the sound also for Anamorphine. Do you know that game? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I saw that yeah. in Berlin. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. She gave a she gave a talk right before me. Well, I was there at her talk. I, yeah. I listened. Awesome. I really like the the music, the the opening. Oh, lot, Kayla Thompson did the music too. Yeah. Very. For this one. Very good. Yeah. Thank very, you. Very. Very. I mean, thank Kayla. Yeah. She's thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Kayla. The one thing that is obviously the most striking about this game and uh, is, is the visual style. And you are an artist and a cartoonist, mm. obviously. Having this visual, this, this virtuoso visual style in VR is, uh, it's, it's a, it, they, they, they blend, they pair together very well. Having the flat cartoon visuals and 3D environments. Can you tell us about, about just your art? Well, um, so yeah, I mean, I've been drawing forever since I was a kid, just like, I was so bored. I grew up in Ontario, it's just like, Ottawa is so boring. Yeah, I, I didn't go to art school until like, I was like 19 or something, and then I didn't, I didn't even know I could make like a living doing art or whatever. Oh, I, didn't, really? I didn't even know that it, like, yeah. Ottawa is so weird for that. It was like in Ottawa, like art is just like a hobby or something. I want, I wanted to be a fashion designer. That didn't, I, I didn't do well at that. Actually, I was like working at a hat shop when I was sixteen. A hat shop. Yeah, and. Uh, Did you make any original hats? Y no, I wasn't allowed. Oh. No, oh. but I, I was like a sweatshop worker because I was really fast at like sewing, and so she just like had me in the back room like sewing, and I just like. She was like, whoa, you're so good, you're so fast. And so I was like, oh, I should slow down. I should take my time. That's then, the, that's the, everybody faces that with yeah, their, exactly. their first job, yeah. I guess. And so I just, I took it too easy and I got fired. And then I was like, oh, this isn't for me. So I just like went to, um, to school for drawing and I went to Sheridan and, uh, and that's where I discovered animation because like they have an amazing animation program and they have like uh, three rooms of life drawing every day. And so it was just like heaven. Like I was just going to life drawing every day, simple line, and then I just um, started doing animation stuff. What are your <laughs> cartoon influences? I guess I don't know. I mean, I like the only art I grew up with was like Archie comics. Uh, super into comics, all sorts of stuff, and I got really into like experimental comics, 
and like, you know, Hellboy and stuff like that, Mike Mignola, like, yeah, it kind of, like, Adventure Time kind of informs my style, but mm, I don't know. I feel like it just comes from, like, the same inspiration, it's just, like, simplifying, like, patterns and forms and, like... Your cartoon influences. Yeah, I love that word. Yeah. I don't know when I'm ever going to find a reason to use that again. You will. You're in New York City right now. Yes. Uh, what, are, what, are, what are you doing here, aside from being right here? Well, tomorrow uh, I have an event with uh, Creative Tech Week. We're doing VR night. It's gonna be a little party. It's gonna be fun. I love coming to New York. I come here anytime. I have time. Because you're in Montreal, it's a it's a convenient. Yeah, it's like a suburb. It was nice to have you on Thank you. on Kotaku.com's whatever this show is. Uh, hopefully, the distinctive visual style of your game gets you 200,000 clicks on Facebook. Yeah. Also my. Sunglasses. And uh, at least 40 comments about your sunglasses. I hope at least 300. I mean, that's probably doable. They are octagonal. Please. So. Yeah, they're special. Like, I got them in Berlin. I had an octagonal pair of sunglasses once. Yeah. They, yeah, they, they got stolen. Oh. Uh, and then they they got mailed back to me. What? Broken. No, just that's a joke. Oh my god. Um, for me personally. I just, it rubs people the wrong way when I'm wearing like my weirder glasses. Uh, I have like a perfectly round pair of black glasses. Uh -huh. When I wear those and I try to go to the supermarket, <laughs> the, the cashier is just like, he's like, but then when I'm wearing these glasses, he's just like, hey man, how you doing? Hey man, how you doing? <laughs> I, I can't pull off octagonal sunglasses as, as you're doing so well, so. Congratulations again on Thank that. Thank you. Thanks. I believe maybe that's enough.